With just 10 commands at your fingertips, you can select, rename and create new columns, arrange or filter out rows, group rows together and then summarize those groups and be able to combine all these data wrangling techniques in a single pipeline like never before. And the best part, these commands are very easy to master as most of them are common English verbs like select or summarize. These verbs will allow you to solve the vast majority of your data manipulation challenges. So let's get into it. We'll start with loading the tidyverse package. First, because dplyr package is part of it, and secondly, tidyverse contains ready-to-use datasets. So let's discover the art of data manipulation with a quick glimpse on the first command, which name is, in fact, glimpse. Glimpse gives you a quick look at your data. It shows all variables, their first values, and their types. It also reveals the number of observations and variables. The beauty of Glimpse is that it doesn't overload your screen if your data is large. It presents only the crucial information. To view the whole dataset, you can actually use the view command. One useful feature of such table view is the ability to arrange values by clicking on the header's variable name. You can also arrange values while working with it. For example, table 2 is arranged alphabetically by countries. However, the whole table can be easily rearranged using one or several columns. Oh god, what is this strange symbol, you might ask? Well, it's a highly useful one. But I'd prefer to demonstrate its use before explaining it. Until then, let's select the most useful columns using the SELECT command. Useless columns will be automatically discarded. But what if you've got 300 useful columns and just want to eliminate a couple? Rather than typing out all 300 names in the SELECT command, which can be cumbersome, prone to typing mistakes, and hard on your fingertips, you can simply add a minus sign in front of the unwanted column names to deselect them. Selecting columns is great, but what if you need only specific rows, such as only those from the year 2000? To achieve this, we can use the filter command with a double equal sign. Keep in mind that the double equal sign means equal to while a single equal sign assigns a value to your name and won't allow for filtering. The arguments here determine the conditions that must be true to keep the row. For example, we want to see only rows with the year 2000. However, if you want to eliminate any undesired observations, for example, to see everything except the year 2000, the exclamation mark equals operator is your friend. It stands for not equal to. Cool, right? But you know what's even cooler? We can do both select and filter at the same time by using this funky symbol called the pipe operator. The pipe operator for me is just another way of saying then. For example, this code takes the table one dataset, then selects two columns, then filters only the year 2000. The operator is called the pipe operator because it pipes the values on the left into the transformed values on the right side. This replaces the less intuitive f of x with the much more readable x then f. The left right nature of x then f is easier to write and understand, as it follows the natural way we read, while f of x reads in a counterintuitive inside out manner making it harder for people to grasp, except for maybe programmers. And the best part, there is even a keyboard shortcut for it. So give it a try. Removing some useless columns or rows is useful. But what if we want to create new columns? Well, we can do it in a similar way evolution does, through mutations. The mutate command literally means creating a new column. We can either fill the new column with whatever we want or use existing or parent columns to calculate new or offspring columns. Not only can you give your column any name you desire while creating it, 
but you can also change its name whenever you want using the rename command. With the eight commands we just learned, you have your perfectly transformed dataset. But having data alone isn't much use, especially if there is a lot of it. So it's common to want to summarize the data in some way, like counting, finding the sum, or average. With dplyr package, you can take things a step further and summarize different columns in different ways. For example, use sum to get an overall summary of all values in the column and n to count the number of rows. Now it's getting really exciting because you can generate new numbers and get a comprehensive view of your dataset using plain English as computer code. However, a single row overview of your data is not very useful, since we have data from two different years and three countries. And that's where the final, and perhaps the most useful, group by command comes into play. But even better is the fact that you can group by several variables at the same time. For example, let's take the empty cars dataset and find out how many cars with 4, 6 and 8 cylinders and different gearboxes the dataset contains. And while we are at it, let's get the average efficiency and average strength in horsepower of cars in every combination of cylinders and gearboxes. So using group by and summarize together is much more powerful than using them separately. And this goes for any function we've learned today. The more functions you string together using the pipe operator, the more advanced your data manipulation becomes. For example, don't look at this chunk of code as a massive block, but rather read one line at a time and you'll have no trouble understanding it. Once you grasp this piece of code, you'll be able to easily create your own code in no time. You can also name the resulting table and save it as an object for a future use by using the assignment operator. But what if you need even more descriptive stats like standard error, median, interquartile range, skewness and so on for all numeric variables in your dataset and for all of your groups simultaneously? Sounds like a lot of work, right? But hold on, you can actually do it with a single intuitive word describe, which delivers all the descriptive stats you can think of for any combination of groups and for every variable in your dataset. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of what the DLOOKUP package can do. Want to know even more powerful functions? Then check out my review on the DLOOKUP package.